Hello and welcome. Today we're going to do something very different, something I've never done before. I was contacted, well I have been contacted over the years by many companies trying to uh, get me to try their products out and I've always turned them down because people tend to feel obligated to say nice things. And if you've been watching me long enough, you know, a lot of times I don't say nice things. If it's a POS, I'm going to call it a POS. However, in editing all my videos, there's been many times I've wanted to do voiceovers at the computer. And a couple years ago, I bought a Microsoft headset with a boom mic, and it was a piece of crap. The audio was horrible. It didn't sound anything like the camera audio did, and it, the level was extremely low. I don't know if it was me, the setup, if I had a bad unit, whatever, but Tonar sent me an email asking if I'd like to review their condenser microphone, USB condenser microphone. Free of charge, they'd send one to me if I did a, a video on it. So I said, what the heck, what have I got to lose? They're sending me a free microphone, I'll give it a try. Now. I haven't even opened the box yet, so you'll be there with me as it comes out. Oh gee, not another unboxing video, good god, or deity of your choice. Well, let's see what we've got. It's a professional looking unit on the cover. Okay, we have the service card. Show us your love, share it with friends, certainly am at this point in time. An instruction manual. Oh, in several languages. And let's see, we'll take a look at the English here very briefly. It appears that they have somebody, I'm assuming this is Chinese made, Facebook.com, I'm not sure where they are to be honest with you. Uh, da -da 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 -da. It doesn't say where it's made. It's got to be made in China. It has to be. Anyway, we'll find out here shortly. The Oh, my point is the, the English in the manual looks very correct. This is the uh, pop filter, or as Electroboom calls it, the <laughs> filter. Some people call them a spit filter, but actually what they are is when you say things like Peter Piper picked the peck of pickled peppers, it keeps the microphone from going. So we'll test that out, see how that works. And uh, very nice feeling material. I gotta say so far it looks pretty good. We have uh, a little windshield, or I guess I would call this the spit shield to keep it out of the microphone. Ah, comes with a little, oh, look at that, a little tripod stand. And this, I take it, is for the pop filter. Let's see here. Wow, it feels pretty solid. And the balance point is good. I was expecting it to be something very light. It is fairly light, but I was expecting it to fall over. Oh, let's see, does this go further down into the should probably read the instructions, but real men don't need a road map, right? Ah, uh, boy, yeah, it's all elastic mount. And now that it's down in there, it's pretty secure. So far, so good. Nice packaging. Oh, well, the cord is probably close to four feet long which is good it'd be nice if it was six or eight feet long that would probably be my only gripe because my computer that I use for editing sits uh, quite a ways under the bench out of the way I'm not sure this is going to reach but I could always put a USB extension on it in fact I'm gonna measure this cord and let you know exactly how long it is Okay, it's 145 centimeters or 1 meter and 45 centimeters. I mean, 4 foot 9 inches. 
uh, 57 inches total which isn't horrible uh, again I'd like to see something about six feet or eight feet long but again I have a USB extension and most people probably don't have their computer tucked as far away as I do now I guess we should uh, mount up I don't know if I should put this guy on right now or not uh, let me take a look at the instructions very quickly here. Okay, that's interesting. The manual does not even mention this. It mentions this pop filter, but there's no mention at all about the little wind filter. But it is kind of a nice accessory to have. I imagine if I was using it in a windy location, I'd want to have it on there. Let's put on the pop filter. Come on, there we go. Oh, I'm out of frame, sorry. It threads onto the end of this little flexible wand. And we can put it right in front of the microphone. Now what I should do is take this downstairs to the other computer, get everything set up, it's your typical Windows microphone thing. You plug it into the computer and they give you instructions here how to use the uh, or generic you know, Windows and Apple instructions on how to set up your sound settings. So we'll take it downstairs, set it up, we'll try it with and without the pop filter and I'll do the old Peter Piper pick the peck of pickled peppers thing with and without it and we'll see how effective the pop filter is and what the audio sounds like. Now what I'm going to do is leave a bunch of uh, dead spots in this video. Actually why don't I just say Peter Piper picked the peck of pickled peppers. If Peter Piper picked the peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? And we'll repeat that sequence a couple of times uh, and I will overdub using this with the pop filter, without the pop filter and compare it to this audio chain or audio uh, recording that I just made using the camera microphones. So let me take this downstairs to the other computer and get set up. Okay we're down here in the basement at the computer bench. That's off to the side of where my downstairs test bench is and as you can see I have better lighting over there. The white balance is a little bit better. But this side here was never intended for shooting video, but here we are. Another little feature I noticed when I got down here was the feet on the tripod are a very nice, firm enough to hold the, uh, they're, they're a stiff enough rubber to hold the thing upright, but they're soft enough to be sticky on the table and it doesn't want to slide. I've seen little tripods like this with hard plastic feet and every time you breathe on the cable whatever it's connected to would slide off the end but these are actually kind of nice they have enough friction in them that the unit's staying in place and again I'm not just saying nice things about this because they gave it to me these are true observations anyone who knows me knows if I didn't like it you'd be hearing about it but we still haven't tested the audio I'm going to plug the thing in. The computer is up and running. And let's see what we end up with here now. This should be a fairly simple thing to do. Whoa, it recognized it. Setting up a device. We're setting up the Tonar TC777. Now, I haven't done this in ages. I'm going to open up my editing software. I've got to turn the mouse on. And the device is set up and ready to go. Actually, I should also try Sound Recorder. But uh, I haven't used another device to enter into my editing software in, in probably four years. So I'm going to have to go through the whole learning curve again. I won't do that on camera. In fact, I'm going to get up, uh, get the. Uh, software set up so that I can download the files that are on the camera. What I'll probably do is do the Peter Piper thing twice in a row and then I will clip it together uh, the audio train 
the first phrase with this, the second phrase without it, the third phrase with it, the last phrase without it, and we'll do a quick A-B comparison. So bear with me, I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, we're going to do some recordings here. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Now we'll cut that up and put it into the audio, and I will label the sections as they play so you can uh, tell the difference real time. And here's a useful feature. If you take the unit and unscrew the tripod from the bottom, it's got a standard microphone gooseneck thread on the mount. So you can st thread in a standard gooseneck or a, uh, a boom that mounts to the end of your bench. There we go, I got the thread started. So you can use a standard gooseneck mount on these and position them just about anywhere you want. That's a useful feature. In fact, I had an offer to uh, do an evaluation video on a, what's the word I'm looking for now? It's fun getting old, every day is an Easter egg for the words you want to use. A microphone boom. I have a microphone boom, Heil microphone boom on my Heil microphone for my ham radio and I absolutely love the thing because it gets everything up off the, off the uh, operating table so I can use my keyboard or take notes or fill logs as I'm talking and the microphone boom allows me to put the microphone right up close to my uh, working area or my mouth without having any room taken up on the table. So I might have to see if that uh, microphone boom is still available for uh, reviewing. That's the word I'm looking for, review. Okay, all right, let me move the camera back a little bit. I'm fairly impressed with the audio quality. I'm not usually very happy with the sound of my voice in recordings. I've been particularly unhappy about how I sounded in the upstairs lab with the Echo. I really wish this camera had an input for a microphone. It wouldn't be usable with this. Of course, this is a USB, but I, I've got to get some soundproofing upstairs. No fault of the microphone, trust me. Do I have any niggles with this? Some very, very, very minor ones. When I first started trying recording, I was getting little to no audio out of this. The problem was, and it was just my own ignorance, the microphone as it came in the box was in that orientation. And it wasn't at all obvious that it was backwards. However, when I picked it up and was looking at it, I realized that the name is probably supposed to be facing forwards and as soon as I did that the audio was darn near perfect <laughs> so remember when you get this and I assume this was the front I mean you pick it up I set it down it tips back just like it's supposed to and I, I just automatically assumed the front of the microphone was facing me however it had been rotated around and it's just you know the way they packed it for shipping it ended up backwards that's not a fault of the system it's just my own ignorance there are extra clips here for more rubber suspension my niggle would be this tends to ride up and it's very very close I try to get in here the lighting's not good. The rubber suspension is very, very close to the bottom of the microphone, and it's quite easy for it to end up outside of here. But as long as it's sitting on the table, you, you shouldn't have any problem with it. It should stay just where it is. The little flexible piece here that holds the pop filter sets easily and sets it right in front of the microphone, so no problem with that. This is obviously no $3,000 studio microphone, but for the price that they're getting, 
it's perfectly adequate. It sits on the bench, doesn't take up a lot of room. I've got a feeling I'll be using this a lot now to do voiceovers. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. And again, I'm not just saying that because they gave it to me for free. It's got a decent appearance. I'm happy with it. I mean, what, what more can I say? And again, it's not a $3,000 studio microphone, but they're not going to give me a $3,000 studio microphone. <laughs> uh, for what it is, it does the job. I guess I give this a recommendation. Give it a thumbs up. Way to go, people. Nice little microphone, nice little unit. Okay, I guess that's it. We'll wrap it up and say thank you very, very much to Tonar. I appreciate you sending this along and it will be used and I'll give you a plug when I do use it. This is the Radio Mechanic. We'll talk to you all again soon. Bye-bye.